Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to the Quarantine Chapel Sunday service. I am so glad that you have joined us today. Yeah. We are recording in the Batica Church of the Nazarene in the Kalinago Territory in Dominica. And I want to take you back to our service last Sunday where the power of God came down in such anointing that it filled the place and changed and transformed life. Listen to this powerful song, then we will go into prayer and get into the message. Almighty God, we pray that you may bless this service and bless this message to our hearts. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. We were discussing about whether the song leader should coordinate with the preacher to make sure that all of the songs that they sing coordinate and correspond to what the message is all about. And some says yes, and some says, well, sometimes the Spirit gives uh, the songs and the message together. And sometimes you don't have to coordinate, you just come prepared. And I think this Sunday is one of those. Because the first song was Spirit, Holy Spirit with us, break our walls down. Spirit, break out. And then we sang about waiting on God, what you're waiting on God for will happen. And then we talk about his goodness is running after me. And all my life I've waited. So if you come to receive what you've been waiting for today, you're in the right place. If you need some goodness to run after you today, you're in the right place. And if you seek the Spirit of God to break down some of the walls in your own life, you're in the right place. Because today, the Word of God is going to reveal a little bit more to us about the power of the Holy Spirit. The church power does not come from electrical connection. It's not hooked up to the electricity that comes into the church. That is not the church power. Neither does the church power run on batteries. Whereby sometimes, like your phone battery, it dies out. But the power of the church runs on the power of the Holy Spirit. Because he said so many places, he said, I will give you power after which the Holy Spirit will come upon you. He also tells us in Acts chapter 2 verse 20 uh, from verse 17 to 21 that in the last days he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. So I want to ask you the question today, where does the power of the church lie? Does it lie within you or does it lie within uh, the power of the Holy Spirit? You see, because 
Without the power of the church, the church cannot be effective in any way, shape, or form. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, the church cannot be effective. No matter how many people may sit in the pews, no matter how many songs that we may sing and feel good about the songs we sing, eh, the church cannot be effective without the power of the Holy Spirit eh, anointing those who come eh, to serve Him. I think we need to go back to the place where we don't rely on talent. Because talent sometimes fails us. We have to go back to the place where we don't always rely on skills and abilities because that too can fail us. But we need to come and rely on Almighty God. The way that He works within our lives, the testimony we give, that becomes the power of the Holy Spirit working in and through us. As human beings, I've come to realize we're not as dependable as we say we are. Amen? Because we may give a word and we may say we're going to do something or we say we're going to be there or we say we're going to come or we're going to say we assist or we say we're going to do that and then sometimes we fail to show up. Hello. Hey, I'm also talking to myself because sometimes I've made promises that I have not Fulfilled for what are the circumstances or situation that might come into my life. So you cannot rely on each other just for the sake of relying on each other. How many times have you been disappointed? Come on, raise your hand. Oh, no, oh not in Batica? That doesn't happen here in Batica? You don't get disappointed here in Batica? Oh! I'm gonna, I'm gonna call my wife and say, "Hey, we gotta move. We've got to move to Batica because here is where you get no disappointment. You get no disappointment here in Batica. Everybody keeps their word. Everyone do what they said they would. They show up on time. Hello. And this is just heavenly right here." I didn't even know it. Now that I know, oh my, you, were, you had a secret holding up. Oh, you've been holding out on me. In your disappointment, where do you turn to? Or to whom do you turn? In your disappointment, to whom do you turn? Well, the Bible tells us, uh, if you read in the book of Isaiah, 11 verse 2 he says the spirit of the Lord uh, will rest on him and the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and of power the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord the Bible already laid out uh, what the spirit of God is going to do in us and through us and for us because the power of the Holy Spirit is what causes the church to move and function. Hello? And if God is not working in our churches today, we are just having a nice little meeting get together. If we're not seeing uh, the power of God presented in the lives uh, of those of us who come Sunday after Sunday, well then uh, we need to go back to basic. We need to go back to the altar. We need to go back and meet God. And let Him start all over again uh, within our lives. Because power, power, is what changes things. Am I not right? 
Power is what makes a difference. You, the people of Dominica, you give power to politicians. Am I not right? Because, yes, you do. You vote for them. Uh, you put your finger out uh, and you vote for them or you sign. Uh, and then, uh, if they get the majority, then they are, we say that they are in uh, what? Power. And what do they do with that power that you, the people, have given to them? Does that power come and serve you? Does that power come and make a difference in your life? Does that power come and change and transform your life? Are you happy with what you voted for? Are you happy with what you have? I'm not hearing you. Hello. But you give the power. You give the power. You give your vote, and, and that's all of what counts now. And when they do want your vote, guess what? They come around it, and they fix some holes, uh, some potholes in the road. Just to make you think that they're doing something. But they don't know about your daily bread. They don't know about your frustration and complaint. They don't know. But the Bible says in Psalms 23, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us what? This day our daily bread. Our Lord knows that your daily bread and what you need and therefore the power that comes from Almighty God, he makes sure that each and every one experiences the power that comes from him. Sometimes we have people coming to the church to see what they can get from the church. There is a saying from a past president of the United States of America. He said, ask not what your country can do for you. That's President Kennedy. But ask what you can do for your country. And I want to change that out a little bit. And I want to say, ask not what the church can do for you, but ask what God can use you to do in the church. Because too many times, the church function depends on the 20%, while the other 80% but Just watching you work, but the other 80% is spectators just watching. But let me say this, for your Christian life to be effective, you must find a place of service for the Lord. And your place of service comes uh, with the calling that comes from Almighty God. Your place of service comes uh, in you presenting yourself and dedicating yourself and being anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit. That is your place of service. Uh, and if you have not found a place of service, you have not doing anything yet for God. Because is in the doing. It's in the doing you get results. Not in the watching. Oh, we have uh, some saint watchers. Woo! Some saint watchers. But what we need are some what? Saint doers. Because the only way you can begin to do is when you commit your life to the Lord. You dedicate your life to the Lord. You are anointed by the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit comes upon you. And when the Spirit comes upon you, you can 
cannot help but. Hello. I know it's a little hot in here, but I'm going to bring some more heat. Because the scripture tells us in Isaiah 42, verse 1, here is my servant whom I have hold, my chosen one in whom I have delighted. I will put my spirit on him and he would bring justice to the nation. It was Jesus, the prophecy in Isaiah 61, verse 1. He walked into the temple. And when he walked into the temple, the Bible says that he opened up the Bible and he read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he what? has anointed me to. Woo! Do you know that everything you do in the church, you need the anointing of the Lord? For it to be effective, for it to be lasting, for it to be life changing, for it to be transforming, you need the anointing power of God. That's why he says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man and woman availeth much. When we come to God in serious prayer, in serious commitment, there isn't anything in the church that would be left undone because we. He would be the one raising our hands saying, Lord, use me. Use me. Use me, Lord. Use me. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. It reaches your heart. And when it reaches your heart, your legs start to move. Your head start to move. Your arms start to move. And you begin to work His work of righteousness. Because which employer is going to pay you a salary day after day for you to come and work, for you to come at work and sit down with your phone? And you're going, We're going on. even those that work at the side of the road. Uh-oh. <laughs> I better be careful what I'm going to be saying now. But even those who work at the side of the road, they're not sitting down when a transport is coming that need passing. They're standing up, holding up a sign, either saying slow down or go or stop. Am I not right, John? <laughs> exactly. You have to be doing something. And then when people see that you're sitting down, oh God, so they talk about you. Just look at you. Just look at her. She's sitting on the side of the road, do nothing. Look at her on her phone. And some of you may have said that. Not about her, because I always see her standing with a sign saying stop or go or slow down. Nobody's going to pay you to do nothing. So then when you want the blessings of God to come into your life, when you want God to move mountain on your behalf, well, you got to show something for it. Although he says the rain on the just and the unjust, when it comes to a particular blessing, when it comes to a particular anointing, when it comes to moving mountain, when it comes to miracles in your life, if you are doing something for the cause of Christ, he would be the first one to say to angel Gabriel, go to Ubatica. Because he sees your commitment. He sees your dedication. He sees your service. He sees your faithfulness. We say, and your goodness shall run after me. When, when you are faithful to God, he said, surely goodness and mercy shall what? Follow you all the days of your life. And you shall what? Dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When you're in need, God intervenes. When you have a situation where you break down, God is going to provide someone.
corner to calm her and lift you up. And I'm saying it's important for us to know, even in serving the Lord, it's no, it's not a free ride. Hello, let me say this again. Even in serving the Lord, it is not a free ride. Because God demands something of us. He requires something of us. And what he requires of us, it's easy for us to give ourselves to him. There's a song that says, I give myself away. I was going to try and sing it, but I've already been warned, Pastor, you can't sing. So don't even try. And I'm taking that counsel very seriously. I gave myself away so you can what? So you can no, no, no. So you can let me come and sit in the pew? No, so you can what? So you can use me for the honor and glory of God. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to use you. He wants you to find your reasonable service in the Lord. Because there is joy unspeakable and full of glory when you're serving the Lord. There is a blessing that comes that you would not imagine when you're serving the Lord. When you're serving the Lord, you're sending your reward up towards heaven. When you're serving the Lord, you're sending your credits. And then when you need something, your credit's already gone ahead. And the Lord is going to send someone to stand by you to meet that need. Amen? A doing nothing Christian is a Christian that has not been baptized with the Holy Spirit. A doing nothing Christian is a Christian that has not been moved by the power of God. A doing nothing Christian is a Christian that refuses to give themselves fully to God. They're still holding back on something, holding back or holding on to something when they need to throw their arms up in the air and say, Lord, I give myself away. So that what? I give myself away so that you can, you know, one of the things that we do as minister when we have a marriage ceremony and the couple comes out before you, all nice and dandy and beautiful, and then we ask this question, who gave this woman to be married to this man? You have to have a father giver. And the father is saying, I give my daughter to him so that he can take care of her for the rest of her life. Which means then, he's given up all of the responsibility, all of the care, and everything else. And he turned that over to this man and said, because he gave her to him. Who gave you away? Hello, Sister Gail, who gave you away? Who gave you away, dear leader? Your father gave you away. And there is an expectation. Well, let me tell you something. When you give yourself away to the Lord, it's a total different scenario in your life. When you give yourself away to God, you get more care, more attention, more support, more joy, more peace, more happiness than you will ever get because you're not holding anything back. And God himself, he will not hold anything back from you.
from you. He said, good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over that the Lord will what? Give unto you. Because you have given yourself away to him. You've given yourself fully to him. You know, there was a lot of excuses why people don't serve the Lord. Well, I'm in a situation, Lord, that I, I you know, that I, I really can't get out of. Well, why don't you trust God to change the situation? Why don't you trust God to change that situation? He is the God of all God, the King of kings and Lord of all. If you really give yourself away and you're really willing for Him to change your life or change your circumstances, He can do it. Amen. And you would be surprised what He can do to that man's heart that you might be holding on to and you're holding back with instead of letting go and let God. Some put work before the Lord. Some put the household chores before the Lord. Some put busyness before the Lord. And when you put these busyness and these household chores and everything has busy before the Lord, you find that you don't have much time on your hands because it eats up your day and you still don't get anything done and accomplished. But when you put God first, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what? I didn't hear you. And A L. A L L oh, not one L but two L's and you can even put two more L's four L's and all these things shall be let, let me say to you let me, let, let me come down closer you are you are cutting short your blessings that Almighty God wants to give to you you're living on pennies when you could be living on dollars. You're living on cents when you could be living, I mean, high up on the mountain. You are living in your own circumstances when the Lord can lift you up and raise you up. Woo! You're struggling and struggling and pulling and pulling when the Lord can free you from that and give you joy and peace unspeakable and full of glory. If you put him first, put him first, because what's going to happen? You see that same job that you put first before the Lord, what happens when it goes away? You come what? Cry it. <laughs> Please pray for me. I just lost my job. <laughs> if you had put God first, if you had lost that job, he would even give you a better one immediately. Right there, you just step right back into it. That's the way the Lord works. He takes care of you. And if you trust him to do that and let go yourself to him and, and, and surrender and give yourself, you will see how God is going to work on your behalf and find a place of service. And I'm saying this does not come by itself. It comes to the power of the Holy Spirit because, listen, the Holy Spirit brings conviction. It's the Holy Spirit that brings conviction within our heart. It's the Holy Spirit that brings correction in righteousness. It's the Holy Spirit that haunts us. It's the Holy Spirit that tells us we're not doing enough. It's the Holy Spirit that tells us we need to give up. We need to give up something. Let go of something. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that constantly speaks to our hearts and to our lives. And then when we respond in joy. Woo! The Holy Spirit can do so much more within our hearts and within our lives. Remember James' prayer? He said, Lord, that you would what? 
Bless me and enlarge my territory. And the Bible tells you that Jabez was a what? An honorable man, which means he was committed to the Lord. He gave himself. And, I, and this is what I'm saying to you. Why are you coming to church Sunday after Sunday and you're not fully committing yourself to the Lord? You're not letting go. Let me ask you this. If you was dating someone, And year after year, he promised to marry you. And you wait a year pass, and two years pass, and three years pass, and four years pass, and five years pass, and six years pass, and seven years pass, and nine years pass. You've just been passed by. Hello. You are now beginning to live a hopeless life because you have nothing permanent to hold on to. All you have is promises that has been given to you and when it falls apart, you're right back where you started. And all that you've invested in your life, and all that you've invested in that individual, and all that you've invested in your family, all that can go right down the drain. But I'm telling you, when you make a commitment to Almighty God, and you follow His principles, and He promised you something, He makes sure He fulfilled every one of His promises. He doesn't keep you waiting as long as a man may keep you waiting. He doesn't keep you waiting as long as a doctor might keep you waiting. He doesn't keep you waiting as long as a dentist will keep you waiting. He doesn't keep you waiting as long as a bus driver will keep you waiting until he's full up to bring you up to Batica. But he blesses you in ways and means you will not even imagine. I'm pushing for some full commitment today because I want you to get the full blessings of the Lord. Do we have anyone that want to stand and say, I want to make a full commitment to the Lord regardless of my situation, regardless of my circumstance, I want to make a full commitment to the Lord. Would you stand and come and meet me here that I can pray with you. You're going all out for the Lord. Don't worry about your situation. That may not be straight, that may not be right. The Lord is gonna deal with that one. But he wants to deal with you first and you with you now, within your heart and within your life. Would you come and meet me here at the altar that we can pray? Or you've been coming to the church and you have not committed yourself for any service, anything in the church. And you need to change that. From a spectator to a participator. Would you stand and say, I want to serve the Lord. I want to find a place of service that I can serve him the way that he wants me to serve him. Remember, it's only 20% of the church is doing the work. And I want to appeal to the 80% of you. Would you come? That you have not committed yourself yet. Let us stand. This is going to help you. And as you come, as we stand, would you come as we stand? Anyone else who want to come as we stand? Anyone else? Anyone else who want to come? Hallelujah. Come on, there's more of you. Oh, young people, you have not made any commitment yet to the Lord. This is a good opportunity to do that.
Come on, some of you, you're looking at me and I'm looking at you and come. Full commitment. We, we're talking about full commitment. Let the Lord take care of the other circumstance. You, you taking that first step saying, Lord, I want to be fully committed to you. Is there anyone else? We're about to pray. We don't want to leave you out. Oh.
Yeah. 